Okay, so. Welcome back. Now let's get the show on the road. Conversations surrounding the parking of articulated trucks on the roads and bridges in and around the Apapa area of Lagos State continues to linger. The government has given a number of directives to the effect that, to this effect, but residents of the area and those whose businesses are located in Apapa have also cried out. A bit of respite was experienced at some point, but it appears it is an issue that needs much more strategy to solve. We do have with us this morning the team leader of the Presidential Committee on Clearing of our Papa Port and Access Roads, former Commissioner of Transportation in Lagos State, Mr. Kayode Okbaifa. Good morning and thank you for joining Good us. Good morning. This work isn't going to end soon, is it? Uh, it's going to end. <laughs> so the no, question is, wait. when is it going to end? Today. No, okay, now. Okay, very now, soon. Bring yeah. us up to date. Yeah, why, thank you. why do they, the last time you were here, you were happy to give us all the stats and show us pictures. What went wrong again? I'm still happy. That nothing has gone wrong. And I think we need to be careful about uh, wrong media okay. um, reports okay. showing old pictures. Okay. Uh, there was a newspaper report two days ago, and uh, if you look at uh, the picture, they showed the picture of uh, an incident scene, like an accident scene, where two trucks fell down and they oh. call it gridlock. Then uh, they also showed where one spread materials on the road, it was on a Papa Ocean, and they call it a Papa Wharf. Ah. So we need to be careful. Another one reported 3,000 trucks on a Papa Bridges and Road. It's not even possible. No, so, the, so the trucks uh, are but back because somebody no, they are not back. Please, please let me explain to you. Let somebody me who lives sorry, in Sorry, sorry, sorry. Please, sorry, please. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. We need to be careful with the use of words on things. Somebody, yeah, the people living in Apapa are telling you the story as seen by them. You will see trucks in Apapa. That's the first thing you need to accept. Okay, so you know, we, should, we, should, we should accept that let trucks will you will see forever trucks. be there. No, no. Okay. This is what I'm saying. We need not to be parked. careful. We need to be careful Moving. so that we don't send the wrong message to people who don't know Apapa. Apapa is a port city with only two roads leading to the port city. The Wharf Road and the Apapa Ocean, the Express Road. The Wharf Road is available working, completely reconstructed. The Apapa Ocean, the Express Road, That's just the one like... That comes from, from the Seven one Up. From, no, the one, that, the one that comes from Seven Up is, yeah. the, is the Wharf Road. Okay. That goes to the Apapa ports. Yes. There are two ports, a Papa port and the Tinkan port. Okay. The one that comes from Sele Oshudi mm -hmm. and goes to, that's the Papa Oshudi Express Road. Mm -hmm. That's the other road. Okay. That goes, takes you to the Tinkan port. And linking the two ports is what you call the Creek Road. Yeah. Now, Creek Road is under construction, mm -hmm. just like the Papa, sorry, Lagos Ibadan Express Road. Mm -hmm. I spent 11 minutes of construction traffic on that road. Normally, it should be about three minutes. So you have Creek Road under construction. You have Liverpool, Liverpool Road, road under that construction. takes the tankers from Wharf Road to their tank farm. is shut down under construction. A very good situation. You need to fix it. Then you have a Papa Ocho, the Express Road, 30 something kilometers, also under construction. Now from Wharf Gate, from the a Tinkan Gate to my two outbound three lane is closed completely under construction. So when you have construction going on, you are expected to see some minimal increase in the number of uh, vehicles that will occupy the road. Uh -huh. Now, three things happened in the last one month that a lot of us did not report in the media. There was an attack on the Lilipon Transit Truck terminal by hoodlums. Vehicles were damaged inside. Two vehicles belonging to MPA were burnt. The security post of the Lilipon truck terminal was burnt by hoodlums who attack also Lagos State Environmental Tax Force team. Now, when, when that happened, you will expect that it will take time for that transit truck terminal to get back on track. The good news is that it came back fully on Monday, this week. That's since October 24th. So that transit park is the fulcrum of the call-up system, the manual call-up system into the port. So if you burn a, a, a factory down, mm -hmm.
for some days there will be no production. Even when production starts, it's not going to be full speed. So that created some setback. That is one. Number two, there was a tanker invasion of Apapa at about the same time. You will recall that the GMD NNPC, the COO NN, NNPC, CO downstream, the, P, the MD PPMC, and so many other leadership of NNPC came down to Lagos to meet with the government. Tank farms in the Jegun area of Lagos were shut down to fix the road. During that period, in order not to create vacuum, products were increased. There was an increase in the amount of products to be discharged from the Marine Beach, that's Apapa Wharf area, then the Sunrise area, that is Apapa Tinkan side. Yeah. So what you saw was an invasion of trucks. Like, it was like three, four times. I, I've not seen that kind of, it was like a fuel crisis. And NNPC managed it very well. So that people don't misinterpret it to fuel. So all of us were careful. And with, the good news is this. They met with the governor of Lagos, DPR, NNPC, and everybody. And the town farms were reopened. The roads were fixed. And that reduced the invasion of the tanker. Mm -hmm. The two incidents happened at the same time. Now, as we get into the dry season, the contractor also gained traction. Now it's concrete. I think I've sent you some pictures yes. about it. So they have started the concreting part of Creek Road. They've gone almost about a kilometer or two. And even and so what they did, what happened is from from Apapa itself to go to the Tinkan port, there are a lot of business, it's like we're in Victoria Island, around eleven to two. And you just see a lot of vehicles. You wonder you are not in rush hour, but for Victoria Island, that period is when People move from one businesses to the other. For our papa, between the wharf, Eleganza side, and the Tinkan entrance, gate two or gate one, mm -hmm. that is Creek Road, yeah. Liverpool Road, there are a lot of logistics businesses going on. And because they have shut down Liverpool, the tankers going to Creek Road tank farms, they have to share the same road with the containers, the areas and the rest. So what you now have, when you now shut down Creek Road, they are now using one road, Bomber Road. Mm -hmm. Then the contractor now needs to co do concrete. So the contractor shut down two entrances correctly. Okay. Correctly. Mr. So Kwefa, what now, let me just learn. Let me learn. Okay. So that people who are not in the want to take a quick break okay. now. We want to take a quick break. We will still come back to the manual call up system that you mentioned and um, still talk about another APAPA in the making in Ikorodu. That's after the break. Welcome back. So before we get back to the, this discussion, uh, we'll quickly go to Bayelsa, where um, Dari Dou is standing by in Yenegua to give us on the spot um, update as to the elections where 45 parties are fielding candidates in the governorship election. Dari. What happened here this morning was the fact that um, electoral officers came in around 9.05 before they came in people already gathered around, um, um, observers, police officers and other security operators were all on ground waiting for them to uh, come around. Uh, then as soon as the um, electoral officers came in, they started setting up, they had to set up the cubicle first and after that uh, get all the materials sorted uh, before people can now uh, start queuing to uh, start the voting process. Um, uh, uh, let's uh, have some discussions around this. I have Dr. Abiola Akiode Afolabi here. She's an observer. She's been going around uh, uh, since uh, morning and she's going to tell us what she's observed around um, Yenegua this morning. Uh, good morning ma'am. Oh, yeah. What good morning. you observed today? Well um, it's been uh, a, a great concern that um, in most of the places that we have visited um, election materials have not arrived. Uh, the personnel also were not there. Uh, police um, security people have been there likewise um, uh, people standing around if you look at where we are there are about um, eight uh, polling units here uh, they're just setting up uh, the, so we are really very worried uh, in one of the uh, polling units there was already tension uh, they were about uh, starting some kind of uh, crisis you know uh, just because but people were able to calm them down and that's a fair you know in a in a state where uh, there's a, uh, that has a history, you know, of electoral violence, uh, I, I think that uh, INEC should have been much more uh, forthright in making doing things right. And if it's just only two elections, you know, that are up 
happening simultaneously. I see no justification for this kind of uh, uh, logistical crisis, you know, that we have found ourselves once again, you know, in Nigeria. So something is clear that it seems that we are not learning from uh, anything, yeah. Okay, uh, the, the logistic challenge, of course, it's quite obvious, but this particular uh, polling station, for instance, is not even far from my neck office or even the racks or wherever the materials are coming from. This is about two, three minutes from the office. And what about the terrains, uh, the very difficult terrains? How, how difficult would they be able to even reach them if um, they, they find it difficult to get in the first place? Are you getting any feelers? Well, exactly. That's also the concern, you know, because there are a lot of waterways and which means that materials have to be moved you know, down that alley. So if you, if we have problems in getting to uh, a place that is just about three minutes drive, you know, from INEC, you know, so you then can imagine, you know, what is happening. But, and from all the information that we are getting, you know, from everyone, you could see uh, a lot of um, threats of violence, intimidation, even in some places where we have been, you can see um, uh, some uh, stand looking voters also telling voters what to do, you know, so if we are also not organized as, you know, an institution like INEC, you know, to get things done at the right time, it gives people the opportunity, you know, to build on that and use it to cause uh, some mayhem. And I think in a place like this, you know, INEC should have been much more, uh, much more uh, serious about this, uh, this work. And from the information that we have gotten since yesterday in Obia, Obia we feel that there's a need for uh, us to strengthen the security because people have complained to us, you know, that there are there are threats of violence uh, in Nimbe, and we're also aware that um, from one of our observers, uh, from one of the transition monitoring uh, uh, group observer, that on the way to Southern Ijo, you know, on the waterways, that there were reports of some of the uh, materials being already hijacked, and those are the fears. Those are the fears, and that's why we think that, you know, INEC itself should actually be forthright and should be ready to address uh, these issues here. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you very much. Of course, it's a very busy atmosphere here. People are walking around and they're waiting for the process to start. Concerns, security concerns, especially about how people would eventually, uh, of course, the voting process when it will start and the security of the people who will be voting eventually. Of course, it's way too early in the day. This is just 9.30 uh, and we're still keeping tabs with uh, um, happenings across the state. We have correspondents uh, in different local governments, eight local governments, and they'll be feeding us with uh, information. Uh, as soon as we have those details, we'll be supplying more. Uh, back to you studio. Thank you so much, Dari. Thank you. And please stay safe. Um, so let me get back to you, Mr. Kweifa. Um, you talked about the manual call-off system. How is that working? Because the last time that um, the chairman of the Association of Maritime Truck Owners, uh, Mr. Remy Ogumbemi, came here, you know, he, he mentioned some of the challenges with it, which, um, okay, so you're supposed to be expecting the call-up, and okay. then some of the trucks that are in line, the one behind will be going before the one. That's a lie. That's, so a lie. let's talk it to lied. that. It How lied. is it working? Yeah, on the issue of the call-up, uh, before I say that, let me say that, uh, just to address the issue she raised, there is an such in the number of trucks showing up in the last uh, few days, and uh, that might have uh, explained the worries of a lot of people. Couple with those three incidences I, I, I mentioned. So I, I just to put it in context, that is mm -hmm. actually after that three months of seeing no trucks, people started seeing trucks and uh, it was uh, unexpected. And uh, we thank God that Lily Pond is back to work. The contractor is also working on um, 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 changing some of the work plan to take care of this uh, Christmas uh, uh, of such. Oh, and now, when we go back to the manner, you recall one of our terms of references, the uh, introduction, development and introduction of a manual call-up system pending the, in, the commencement of the electronic. So there is a procurement for electronic call-up system in the making. So, so how, no how long will that come up? Let me give say us, this. Give us Let me say, there is no give point for, uh, for us making so much issues that electron, electron, is already in the process. So the time... So like, when are we looking to see no, no, it I am not Give in, us a vague So idea. I am not in position to talk about um, the timeline because I'm, I, I am a, I'm to, to work on the manual system to work 
for now. Now, we have introduced a manual system, which we use for the period you say you didn't see anything on the road. Mm -hmm. So the manual system, Can't we work. based it on an electronic color principle, but with human contact. Now, when the electronic comes up, the human tax will be eliminated. Mm -hmm. So the difference now is the attack on the fulcrum of the manual system, the attack on Lily Pond was what caused what you saw recently. So tell us so about how this manual call-up system works. The electronic system is simply what you have, like the alien Uber or taxi file system. Okay, so how, how does so this manual work? The, the, the manual system we have now is that all trucks are to stay at the parks of the owner or rented parks. Now there are 30, 34, now 48 parks. We call them nominated parks. So if you are, if you have the call of stars with the terminal operator in the port, he says that I have these containers to be picked, or I have this um, empty container to be returned. He informs MPA. When he informs MPA, he also informs the owner of the product. So between the owner of the product, MPA, and that terminal operator, a call up is generated. Come and pick your stuff. So when you get the call up to pick your stuff, you apply to the, you now move your truck to the nominated park. That's your staging area. You, from the nominated park, you are now called in by MPA into Lily Pond. So from Lily Pond, you are now released to into the port. So you have no business to be on the road. It is working. And yeah. there are no challenges attached to it, like that, the, like the human factors. Without, there are nothing in life without challenge. It's just like when you call your taxi with your phone, and I do my with Uber or taxi fan, mm. one is more efficient. You get it? The electronic is more efficient than the manual. At this What's thing, the challenge with the manual? It's just the human contact. Anything you have human contact in this stage, nobody wants to do that that's again. What, that's no, what those are not... Sorry, let me say it again. You have used something and you said everything worked. Then when you now say it doesn't work, you need to find out why it doesn't work. We don't need to insinuate. I am on ground. One of the main reasons is that shutdown of Lily Pond. Now, do you know how many trucks we are talking of that goes through this call-up system? They are not up to 30% of the trucks in the port. They are only the flatbeds, the one that is going to pick the container, mm -hmm. the one that has the empty container, and the, the refrigerated trucks. Those are the only ones. And there are no more than, let's say, going into the port in a single day, 800 out of 3,000. Those are the ones that go straight. The Arewa trucks, those that takes in Domino and the rest, they don't need color, like we are talking. Their color is automatic. They go to Olam's, Honeywell, Flower Mist, Dangote, they pick, the product is ready. The manufacturing, Dangote, Boa, Standard Flower, Honeywell, Flower Mist, they have a bulk color. They go into pick manufactured wood. They don't follow this, that, or that. They don't mm -hmm. go through Lilipo. Mm -hmm. So you have the fish truck, those small, small trucks, like 90 a day we move. They go in there when the ship arrives to go and pick. They don't go through that call-up system we are describing now to be electronic. Okay. But when electronic comes, everybody will go through it. Now, when you have all the, the few number that are causing the e-cups in Apapa are the container laden trucks and the empty container trucks mm -hmm. that wants to return his container because he's paying. For every day he has that container on his truck, mm -hmm. he's paying the owner of the truck, he's paying the Shipping company. That's why you see the rush. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that electronic is the way to go. There is no option. Okay. But I know that it is under. It was supposed to take off September one. That was the timeline our committee was given. But now that it's still going through the process, mm. we have to wait. But we may, we need to make do of the manual call up we have now. So if we keep saying somebody is at the back, it's a lie. And I'm saying it. I know what it, we are having. What you call the corruption fight back in Papa to discredit whatever system. There was a manual color before now, and there is a, an improvement in the manual color. So what they want to do is discredit whatever is on ground so that they can go back to their old system and take advantage of the system, like the burning of Lily Pond, and then disorganize the system. Because some people make money when the system is not working. working. Yes. So you have well, said that um, Christmas is coming. Mm. And obviously, there's going to be an increase in the number of cargo coming into Nigeria. This is already the middle of November. Maybe it's even increased already because goods have already started coming in for Christmas. 
how are you going to manage this? Okay, l when let the me say this. Increases uh, towards the uh, um, recently, just yesterday, there was a meeting of all the concerned, uh, an extraordinary meeting. You have the CG Customs, the MDMPA, the ESG Pass Council, um, the terminal operators. You have the representative of even Elijah and Liko Dangote, and uh, you have the shipping companies. These are the things we gather to, to review. Already, there is an upsurge in number of cargo to the port. Hmm. Uh, we know that. And already, there is already, that's what people Plus are- Plus border so, closure. And then there is this border closure and goods that are meant for Benin, meant for Nigeria, are now being rerouted, rerouted back to Nigeria. to Nigeria. So we are going to see more of these goods coming in. And it's a, it, I don't see it, I, I don't like using the word challenge, but that's a real world. Okay. That's a real world. But hmm. it's an opportunity for us to do better. And, and what, what we all agree to do in the next few days, you will hear more from uh, the MPA and then the, the uh, fuel distribution side, the wet cargo and uh, mm -hmm. the operators. And what, 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 we, what we want to get right is Lily Pond, we will get Lily Pond to get back to full operations. Mm -hmm. We will do a lot of stakeholder mm -hmm. engagement to let people know mm -hmm. there is that you need to compete, agreed. They let the competition, competition be uh, not destructive. So when, when you see many trucks struggling at the same time, it's just because it's competition. You know, everybody is moving flour. Four companies. Four companies are moving sugar. Cement. Another four companies are moving cement. So there is a lot of competition among the operators okay. at the point. But we've been able to bring them together to understand that whatever happens, everybody will have a fair opportunity to pick your goods and go back to your mm. base if you stay within what the operators actually order. And order. Order. Okay, order. let's quickly go to the, the um, I said, a papa in a korudu. I don't know if you I get what I'm trying to say. Okay, so people that are in the Ikorodu West area, particularly if you follow um, Ogolonto, the, 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 the lighter the trucks, mm -hmm. it's like the new Apapa. I think at this point. So what are we going to do about that? Because we're not even talking about the roads. The roads, gone. Gone. But the trucks are packed on that narrow yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I Both think, sides. I think at this point we need to go general. Is a, is, a, is, a, is a national issue, is a problem we have to solve. And uh, um, we have to go multimodal. And the good news is that there is an effort in that regard. We are now moving a lot of goods by the badges. Many people don't know that. Mm -hmm. I've seen the data from one of the terminals. It's moving about equal amount, if no more, by waterways into a papa port than by road. Mm -hmm. But they move them from I2 and they move them from Ikorodu. So that's why you're having that pressure on Ikorodu too. A lot of companies are moving their uh, containers from the port, taking them to Ikorodu by the water okay. badges, okay. and that's what is causing. Then whenever there, there need to be a clearance at the port, they use Ikorodu. So the, 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 what we need to do now, and which I believe the government is working hard on, is not to let the people of Ikorodu go through what the residents of Apapa have gone through and are still Going through. going through. That is seeing tank. You know, the moment you see trailers struggling with you driving, it's already a trauma. They are not even not struggling with you. Yes. They are packed like you know they were. They are in their. In the Kurudu, yes, I on the road. We have to visit that area and, and just. Please, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an it's it's an urgent but, thing. But beyond that, for their papa resident too, we need to understand they've gone through a lot of trauma. They have. And every time they see trailer, they feel. Yes. They stop, and uh, the, 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 the gift we should give them for Christmas is a Christmas without the trailers and tankers on their road. Okay. And we promise we will do that for them. Okay, Mr. Barifa, since all this started, there's been talk about why don't we revamp the other ports? Lagos is not the only port in Nigeria. Has anything happened in that regard? On uh, Calabar, Potter, like I told you, you know, you know, me, I don't work for the port, but I can speak to what I know. There is increase in activities at the Eastern Port. You recall recently, House, House Committee, other committee from the House of Reps National Assembly went there, and uh, from the figures we are hearing, mm -hmm. there is activities. But you see, what, the, there are preferences for anybody who wants to bring yes, in the street. The shallow, the, the depth of the water, mm -hmm. the, 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 so many things involved. But, and then people find Lagos roads easier for them to 
get to other parts. But, but MPA at the point slashed the charges to a college. In people. the other parts. In the and other parts. Uh, no, they are still they are using it now. You see, when once something happens, we we tend to forget that it has changed. The the, the usage of these sports have is quietly right. ramp, ramping up and there. Uh, but the more important thing is that we don't want to see those trailers on, on our roads. On our roads. Yes. What yeah. would you quickly say to the Korodu situation in terms of trying to nip it? It's not even, it didn't start for, from, for people who have complained because I, I listen a lot to traffic radio and I hear so much, you know, coming from that end. What would you say now? How soon would you be moving there? Uh, it's, not, it's not part of our terms of reference for now, but okay. we we'll, we'll now hearing it live. I think the, the most honorable thing to do to those people is to get there before Monday and assess the situation and quickly find a way and raise and, and raise because I will personally take it up, discuss with, with all those that needed to be talked to, including the government of uh, Lagos State. We can't afford Ikuru do to go through what the people in Apapa I went through. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be allowed. Okay, we'll, we'll take we'll take much. another Stop. break. We'll yeah. take a break. I, I think Mr. Pefa will still have to be here with us <laughs> because um, we want to talk about when this mandate is going to be delivered when we come back after this break. Welcome back. So, uh, Mr. Pefa, the mandate your committee has is um, supposed to have been delivered some months ago. Wh when is the new delivery date? Okay, uh, let me see. The last time I said that we, I don't have a deadline, are they? we have timelines. Um, we ought to have uh, been out. But for some reasons, the presidency decided we should um, stay longer for the institutions of government to fully take control. The plan is that institutions, you know, there was a time during um, in Lagos State, during the former governor, where you have the institution stood their ground and confronted this issue. That's the same method we're using. So um, the institutions are ramping up. The police command, the LASMA, MPA, shippers council, regulations will come out. Then the tanker unions, everybody has to be on the same same page. And we are getting close to that uh, uh, stage now. But the more important thing is an, is a lasting, an enduring lasting solution, which you mentioned one, the electronic call-up system, the rule of law, uh, strict enforcement of the law, and the multimodal transport system. The good news is that the railway is coming up gradually. The modernization of the Lagos Ibado Cano Rail is going into the port. And uh, I, I think I, there was a time we shared some pictures of moving cargo by rail. That has gone down now because the line has been shut to allow for the modernization. I learned they were moving 60, and as soon as they open again, they will be ramping up close to 200. If they do up to 200, they are moving almost half of the container that you need to move. Mm -hmm. So we need to, all those institutions need to quickly ramp up so that uh, the people of Apapa and indeed the people of Lagos can have respite from um, these uh, uh, seeing trailers. We, we, yeah, we want the economy to move. We want the trailers to do their businesses, the tankers to move the fuel, but more importantly, we should move fuel by the pipelines. But if they are to complete the last mile journey, they shouldn't disturb citizens on the road, not to talk of even harassing us Indeed. by the by the way they drive. I, I was my car was also damaged in a papa during this exercise okay. by truck and, now, and I know what people go through. We have a tweet here from Uche P who says, why can't the Apapa Road sustain the same status it assumed when Buhari visited Lagos? Where did all the trucks go at that time and why are they back on the roads now? So um let me tell you they are not back on the roads. I want to say it again and People should, if you want to know, go to Apapa. The, 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 when the president came, the, the, the truckers decided that uh, they would listen to what they were told. They stayed off the road for that two days and they came back. And the economy might suffer to some extent because a lot of people live on daily life. Now, we, what we have done is beyond that. We have gone better than that. We have seen that the last... Uh, out of the last five months, the last four months was near perfect until that attack on okay. Lilipo. So they are not back. I want to call they are not back. Please don't let us fall for the corruption fight backs. They are the one creating the impression and advising the truckers to come back that this thing must not be the corruption fight backs. Oh, okay. There are people benefiting from the rot, and I keep saying it, and they are fighting back very hard.
And, 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 and look, the road is under construction, a purpose We want all the roads fixed. Government has awarded all the contracts. So when you do construction, there is going to be some, like we're having on the Lagos uh, Ibadan yeah. Express. Mm -hmm. Now, then the, 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 the other thing, you burn down Lily Pond, the, the control center. It's like burning down a petrol station and you say you see crime. Cry, a robbery will come after you burn down the petrol station. So yeah. the good news is that it is back. So I want to assure the likes of, I've forgotten his name, Uche. that uh, Uche, mm -hmm. they are not back and they will never come back. We will ensure they never come back onto the roads. I have videos, I have pictures. I have seen the picture of a papa um, Uche this morning. I have seen the one for Gerard. The one for Gerard this morning is not the, the containers. He is the fish trucks. <laughs> that are more this morning. That means a ship has landed, and they're not supposed to come before 10. So you can see those are the indiscipline that you see. So once we are able to get them to understand that, there's no need for this unnecessary competition. But the, good, the, 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 the better part of it is that what you have today, what you have today uh, at this moment, is better than what we had um, six months, I mean seven, eight months ago. So what we need to do is to go back to the pre- attack on Lily Pond and get back to that stage as fast as we are. And I can assure you, by next week, we'll get back to that pre-October 24th because Lily Pond, MPA has put in enough uh, structures now to get trucks coming into Lily Pond. If you go there now, it's almost empty. So those trucks that are struggling to enter there, they are now struggling with the tanker to go to Marine Beach. Who will resolve all those issues? I, as soon I, as I, I like your optimism, um, Mr. Poefa. You have said they will never come back. We will never allow them. So that means a system is going to be in place. The is system the, is in place already. Okay, so is it the call-up system or we still the a bit of uh, maybe the task force uh, no, is it, going no, into We have another... introduced a traffic management system. It's working. We've introduced a manual call-up system that is a, a, an imitation of the electronic call-up system. We have also, uh, but we are hampered by the construction on Papa Oshodi Expressway. The construction has reached the lane of concrete. And when you lay concrete, you know it's 21 minimum to 28 days. When you block an intersection, it has to be blocked for 20 to 28 days. So, uh, but, and this is the dry season. It's the period the contractor wants to take advantage of the dry season. So we will do all that is possible to work with the construction timetable, get Lily Pond back to full swing, get stakeholders engagement back on. The Lily Pond non -oper full operation remove confidence in the system. So once Lily Pond is working back, the system will come back. And that is the fulcrum of be any solution in the port system. It is the call-up system, and there must be a transit park, and there must be major parks. So we don't. Have, the major parks are now in Ogere, and there is a plan by Lagos State Government and uh, Ogun State Government to also partner and put one more and in Ogere. And, and, and the park and is the in good shape. No, we are we are using multiple the, small, the, small the parks The one, now. for instance, in Ogere. Oh, it's, you know what it used to be? When you go on Ogiri before, you used to have be moving in between Taka. You don't see that again. That means something is working nice over there. So we have actually improved, but we can always do better. But what I want to assure people is that from what we came out of from the meeting yesterday in Abuja and the subsequent meetings that we hold in Lagos, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with the stakeholders, the concern is this Christmas uh, a situation mm -hmm. now that we have gotten out of the attack, uh, the construction, then we need to look at the effect of the border closure, bringing more goods, and the, more importantly, the residents of our Papa. They are living there. Some of them are doing business there. I have seen school children at 4 p.m. in a vehicle struggling with um, uh, trailers. What we want to achieve is from Ijora 7 up, Ijora Sifax down to the port gate. Any tanker, any trailer that should be on the road should be moving to its destination. It should not have a two minutes stop, except there are intersection traffic. But when you have one incident, that's another problem in Papa. When you have one incident, like over, over eight child cargo, we just block one mm. entrance, it can be there for another six hours. Because when they fall down, you need to use what they call karma to remove the 
um, um, what do you call it, the container. Then you have to call the Lassema Rescue Unit. They are doing a fantastic job. Every day, they move no less than three, four container trucks falling down. The one I saw last, the trailer and the container fell. The container was well hooked. It was carrying log. I know log is heavy. The, the trailer tried to, like you used to have on the trailer bridge, tried to, it was going on the ramp. That has to do with roadwork. It? Mm. it went into reverse and then fell. And it blocked the exit from a papa. And that was for six hours. Mm. So there are also issues of incidences of this trailer that, uh, but luckily the Lagos State uh, Lassema mm. Rescue Unit has enough equipment. But the problem now is how to get to this. So what they have done, they are, we are now going to put one in a papa permanently. Mm. They are putting one in the next, they, they want to get it fixed. As soon as, yeah, they're putting one in a papa permanently. To, to, because many of these trucks are not roadworthy. So FRS is working on that with MPA to make sure. But you know, once you come up with these uh, things, they start their own kinds of uh, argument too. And, but whether we like it or not, before January 1, so many things will have been put in place in accordance with the existing rules and regulations and laws mm -hmm. that will make all of them, because all stakeholders, major stakeholders have resolved, as I yesterday, that it's not going to be, we will be compassionate, but it's going to be zero tolerance. We will be compassionate for them to have, you know, the port employs a lot of people. We will be compassionate for them to do their job, but it's going to be zero tolerance. And I'm using this medium to appeal to their leadership of all the transport unions, especially the petroleum tanker drivers union and NUPENG, the Comptoir, NATO, and Amalgamated, Amato, and whoever are the groups that have these drivers and truckers and transporters that you have to do business the way people do business. The road is a shared asset. Yes. It belongs to every Nigerian. Exactly. Either it's one day old or not. And that road must be used with respect for everybody. No individual or group should hold us to ransom. Okay, Mr. Kwefa, it's interesting. You know, while you were talking, you said at some point um, during um, one of the governors in Lagos, uh, we didn't find these trucks on the roads. That means something was put in place. So at what point is it that, um, you know, something went wrong? What did you identify, you know, your group or your, your community? What did you identify as, okay, so this was where we dropped the ball and this is, you know, how we are facing it. Yeah. Enforcement. It's enforcement. You need to enforce it. We have the laws. We have the rules and regulations. So at some point, enforcement went into abeyance. It wasn't good enough. Uh, let me admit you. I'm very sorry to say that. Well, that you were the commissioner um, of transportation in Lagos, and you were involved in getting rid of these trucks at that time. Are you acting in any advisory role, for instance, to the current government? Because you have experience in this yes, matter. Yes, yes. You are? Yes, sir. Thank you. So it's enforcement, <laughs> that, you, it's enforcement that you have identified. It, it, no, I, enforcement is there. Then there is, you know, enforcement not only takes you to the rule of law and respect, and respect for the rule of law. There are too many. But I, I think we should go forward to solving the problem. I, I don't want to go back to problems. I think the issue now is. No, we you have know, you know sometimes, sometimes if you don't know where you're coming from, no, you no, we know. Not know where you're coming from. We, we, we have gone beyond problems. Mm -hmm. Government knows the solution. We are now at the level of implement. And like you said, in the last six months, we've had about four, four five months of good things and i told you what happened those incidents that happened ordinarily we should have recovered immediately but it was just we didn't get back immediately mm. and that allowed for some so but that's and the point i mean is that not that the trailer or the trucks came back people have seen a situation where it was brought under control mm. so anything any deviation from that is to them a comeback yes I agree with them. Okay. Our job is to make sure they don't see that situation so that in their minds they never have the illusion that there is indeed a comeback. And that's what, uh, 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 if, if that is not done, then we have not done what we're asked to do. And we have our integrity at stake to make sure it is done. And I must say this that we met yesterday at the villa all the agencies involved, except the NNPC team. Mm. And uh, we all resolved, we'll be meeting 
in the next two, three days, and uh, we want to get back to what it was Mr. before Bacon, October 24. How true is it that in your other life, any trucks found parking on those flyovers were impounded? How true is that? Doesn't another life. What would you have in your state? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were thinking I was dead and came back. No, 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 okay. no, no you didn't. Die. Um, I think I don't want to talk about the past. Let's talk about the present. We should. No, do... why are they not being impounded now? Oh, no, they are parking oh, my on God, the road. Go and see last my yard is filled up. Go and see Lily Port. We still have almost 200 yet to be collected. And they are still parking on the road. No, they are not parking. No, I keep saying it. They are not parking oh. on the road. Like, look, you used not, to have. Okay, not like before. Okay. Look, what people are calling parking. I just traffic now for 11 minutes, and there are trucks all over the place, to my right and to my left, and we're all moving slowly. If that happens in a papa, it is described no, as no parking. Oh. It is described as parking. You know, a papa only is that the people are, we have been too traumatized with their, the, with their uh, uh, the propensity to stay permanent. So I'm not disputing the fact that um, they are constituting the news. And what I'm saying is that the good news is that you can never see a truck in one location in Apapa on day one and see the truck in that location on day two, have not having completed this assignment, except the ones that left Lily Pond and they could not enter the port for one reason or that. And that we have even said we are not going to allow anymore. So you will not see them for almost three, four months. It didn't happen, but there was an incident. The, 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 the corruption fight back target the basis of the thing. The people who blew, who, who, who burnt, that, who attacked Lily Pond, they didn't do it just on their own. It started with protests. And then the next thing, you saw that the tax force came to clear them out, and they attacked the tax force, even injuring a policeman with gunshot. And when the police left, they took over, and they damaged the wall. But these the people wall. are not invincible. No, they arrested about 18 of them. So it's, not, it's never going to happen again. It's never going to happen again. We say amen to that. Mm -hmm. so I, I want to plead with uh, Lagosians and especially the residents of our Papa. We met last week with them on the public holiday that uh, the stage we were as of October 23. We are going to get back to that stage within the next uh, few days. And uh, even though there will be upsurge of cargo at the port, they will see more trucks that we will manage the situation that the trucks will not affect and that will not be stationary trucks at any point on their way. And all the closures for diversions that has taken place, we are talking with Ministry of Works, we will see those areas we can um, work on to make sure they, they have more access into their area. Right now they have uh, only two access, that is the Marine Road and the Airways. Point Road is blocked, we will work on all those ones. To so the these are the words of the team leader of the presidential committee on clearing of Apapa. If you live around Apapa, if you do business there, Mr. Pefa is giving you the assurance that. And they can send those WhatsApp messages. Okay, you want to leave the WhatsApp yeah. number? The, the rest that they have. It. Oh, okay. okay, all right. They, they have I'll it. give you 0807. Okay, mm. 0807. 500. 500. 5411. 5411. And let the message be encouraging. Okay, so <laughs> if you have any questions, Tell if you see problems, we'll find a way to something different, yeah. if it doesn't come to pass what Mr. Kwaifa has said this morning, you send message, WhatsApp message, you say. And they should also pray for us. 080 7500 5411. 080 7500 5411. What's up, Okay, if it's an I'm emergency, we can. So you can also make, uh, give it, Mr. Kwaifa and his team a call. From Mr. Kingslayer. Kingslayer, you guys should stop being economical with the truth. Apapa can never be decongested until other ports in Nigeria, like Calabar and Rivers Ports, are enabled to receive big ships. I don't know what the member decongested. Is he talking of the road or inside the port? There are two sides to it. So if he's talking of the road, it was decongested. So he's, he's wrong, dead wrong on arrival. Let me give, okay. inside the port, let, yes, let, let me correct. give the number again. People living around Apapa. <laughs> 
people living, people working, like as anybody who anyone, <laughs> and even the people in Ikorodu, no, you know, no, if you, should you, they should not call I, I, No, it's just the in case they no, have the message. message. Okay, so 080-7500-5411. Thank you so much, Mr. Faye. Ah, thank you. This is where we're going to leave it for today. But of course, we shall expect you to come regularly and bring us up to speed as, as regards what is happening in that sector, especially as Christmas approaches. I want to challenge. I want to say I'm very impressed when I entered and I saw that the title of the discussion was a papa clean up, not a papa gridlock. <laughs> So I think we are moving away from Bill Lock now. Mr. We are now in the restoration Mr. stage. Coyote, so thanks to channels. Team leader, presidential <laughs> committee on clearing of our Papa Port and Access Roads. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming to talk to us this morning. Thank you. Thank and you. Good luck, and we hope that you will succeed before Christmas. Thank you. You are very optimistic. We wish you all the best. Thank you. So Sunrise will be back with another conversation in just a moment. Please don't go away.